watching the world burn, watching the world burn, July 18th, 2024, let's get into it. First uh, story I wanted to talk about, because I haven't seen anybody pointing this out. So supposedly, uh, Mr. Uh, Genocide Joe up there, that Biden dude, uh, he's got uh, COVID, I guess. I don't know, looks like a cover story to me, but anyway... Uh, the thing I want to point out to the Democrats is, uh, hasn't he got the booster, to the booster, to the booster, to the booster, to the booster, which I thought was supposed to protect you uh, from getting COVID. I guess I was wrong about that. Maybe uh, that's why Democrats were so afraid of the unvaccinated uh, when they should have been afraid of the vaccinated. <laughs> Oh my God, I, I can't believe that crap. That was the first story I wanted to hit. Second one was, uh, I'm getting a lot of comments about people that say, oh, we, we like your channel. Contact this email or this phone number and uh, we can help you out with your, with your channel. Well, you know, I'm, that might be so, you know, I, and I'm not going to cut off comments, but I just want to point out that you're talking to one broke-ass dude. <laughs> I have no money. None. Zip. Zipola. So if you want to charge me to help me with my my uh, account, uh, I have no interest because at one moment I can't afford to pay you. Now, if you want to help out for free uh, and you've got some ideas, I, you know, put that in your comments. Say, look, that cybersecurity guy, I'm willing to help you for free. And if we can get things going, you know, maybe you could pay me some nominal amount down the road. You know, I have a Patreon or a buy me a coffee or whatever. Just don't put up there a solicitation without telling me what you're going to charge me. Because I got no money. All right. I'm broke. B-R-O-K-E. Broke. All right. So that was the next uh, next thing. So uh, getting back to the uh, assassination attempt there. You know, everybody's got uh, all kinds of things coming out now. You know that if the FBI investigates that, well, <laughs> it's, that's like uh, letting the, the coyote loose in the hen house, you know. We ain't going to learn a damn thing. They're going to cover up. By, in fact, they'll do just the opposite. They'll cover up everything. So we need an independent investigation. And I liked uh, Scott Ritter's suggestion. He said that uh, Congress could put together a committee and work through the governors especially the governor of Pennsylvania, which probably wouldn't work because that's a Democrat, I think. But anyway, and, uh, and let them conduct their own investigation and see what the results would be. That's the only way we get any answers. We're never going to know. You know, I'm still adhering to my second shooter theory. So we'll see, which makes it even more a miracle that uh, Trump survived. We have been reporting from day one that someone was on that water tower. And now 10 eyewitnesses, 10, have come forward to confirm that, yes, someone was on that water tower. So you can throw all these 10 people out. You can say, oh, they're just nuts. You know, they're just Trump supporters. They're just nuts. Or you could listen to them. Um, who was on that water tower the day that President Trump was shot? And now we have video of a figure, someone, on that water tower. Now, initially, RSBN Network originally aired this wide-angle footage from their live stream on their X account during this day. We've now zoomed in and added some text so you can see a figure moving on top of this water tower. So take a look at your screen here. George's a couple of months old, and if you uh, want to really see something that said, take a look at what happened. Oh. You see that figure disappear. Wait, 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 wait. Now you see that figure reemerge. Okay. Now the figure reemerges. So interesting, right? Now we're going to zoom in. You can see this dark figure at the very top here. As President Trump is speaking, right before the shots are fired, and then this person, right after, about four seconds after the shots are fired, steps out. You can listen to the ducks out of the view. <laughs> And they had been 
right by the fence where the other shooter was. There was one I heard in the water tower. There was one by the fence. And still, obviously, initial reports. But what we do now first crack of the gunfire, and I just screamed, it's the sniper, it's the sniper. And he was firing down toward the water tower. That's what we're hearing. Gentlemen behind me, we were, I was one seat. He was to the right of me. He could see the sharpshooter on the behind Trump. He said the sharpshooter shot to the left. He killed the gentleman in the water tower here. So uh, unbelievable. And many, uh, almost everyone in the chat is saying, I see it. Because I, I mean, I, I was saying second. I think there might have been a third after watching the redacted. I put that up. Uh, anyway, so that's, uh, that was their theory. And, of course, a lot of people talking about the water tower. That's another theory. That's it, that's it on the uh, assassination attempt. But I did want to give you an angle. That could have been... I mean, let's say they took Trump out, all right? Now, we know that January 6th was a setup. I've told you that many, many times. In fact, uh, as more and more evidence came out, there were more Antifa and federal agents in that crowd than probably Trump supporters, <laughs> you know, <laughs> agitating things. They wanted a riot. Imagine how many Antifa George Soros had on the sidelines ready to rock and roll if Trump had gotten taken out. And then we could have been under martial law. That'd be the only way. I mean, that would be a great way to keep the Democrats in power, wouldn't it? Just saying, I mean, that's I got no evidence to this regard. But I tell you what, if I was an evil son of a gun, which uh, we know they all Democrats are, that's how I'd play it. I would have had everybody ready to go out and riot on the streets with MAGA hats on uh, and paid Antifa agitators. Maybe some BLM people in there and just set the whole freaking country on fire. That's the way I would have run it. Getting on to the next one was, uh, once again, getting back to Scott Ritter. I tell you, I'm a huge fan of his. I'm, I'm going to admit it. And because uh, he's just talks so much sense and he makes me think about things. But he's pointing out that in 20, by 2026, we're going to be putting those intermediate range uh, intercontinental ballistic missiles in the uh, I think Germany, Germany, and maybe a couple other countries in Europe. Well, that means that's a six-minute flight time to uh, Moscow. And that is an existential threat to the Russians. Now, the Russians are building their own inter intermediate-range nuclear missiles. So, and he, and Scott pointed out, they have a first, they, they've adopted a first-strike doctrine. So once those missiles go in by the Biden administration or the lunatic Democrats, what do you think the Russians are going to do? You know, they don't, that's use it or lose it. They could launch a first strike, and Scott believes that they absolutely would. And also he pointed out the uh, F-35s. Think about this. So, you know, we got a lot of F-35s over in Europe now, and every time one of those takes off, you've got about an eight-minute uh, range because they could have a nuclear bomb on them because they're nuclear capable so the russians have to treat every launch of an f-35 fighter jet as a possible nuclear launch that means that we're on a hair trigger man we're at the end of the world and if the democrats get in power it's the end for all of us there's no way we survive four more years of uh, satanic uh, pedophile democrats in charge of the united states just don't see it happening. And uh, as Scott pointed out, Trump ain't perfect. But at least we got a chance <laughs> with Trump. And you know what? He, it was a funny, he gave the, I wish I could take credit for this. You know, I hate borrowing all this from him. But uh, he was saying, you know, it's kind of like uh, in Star Trek. You know, and the, the, uh, the, the, the Enterprise is getting ready to be destroyed in, uh, in the first series, not the not Picard. And uh, so they're cruising along. How you doing? And uh, so it was, it's hilarious because it, Scott goes, he says, Kirk goes, well, let's, let's do this, that, and the other to get out of this precarious situation. And Mr. Spock always goes, Captain, I only calculate a 19% probability that we will survive given that plan. And then Trump always looks at him and he says, well, give me a better plan. <laughs> <laughs> and Spock, you know, he tilts his head. Remember that? And he goes, uh, "I don't, I don't have one, sir. Uh, 
let's do it. You know, I mean, it, 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 you know, he says it a different way, but I mean, that's more or less what he says. It's like, well, I guess we're following your plan, Captain. <laughs> and that's where we are for nuclear war. That's where we are, man. I, you know, at least with Trump, we got a chance. He's talking about, you know, at least he's going to talk to Putin and try to work something out. If we can get that war ended, I, mean, I know the Russians are going to bring up the, the uh, intermediate range nuclear missiles and maybe we'll get some sanity. Now they repeat it like a mantra. We will support Ukraine for as long as it takes. I wonder how long it will take. In Afghanistan, it took 20 years to realize that you lost. Or is it true that in Iraq, which you also abandoned, they are now trying to stay, despite the decision of the Iraqi parliament, that the United States should withdraw its troops? There will be the same approach to Ukraine as they took in Libya for the state to collapse. And now everyone is gluing pots together for them. The Russian foreign minister spoke about how the recent events in Switzerland were not serious and how Russia has been willing to negotiate from the beginning, but these negotiations have to be realistic negotiations that are not just aimed at pounding the podium and demonizing Russia, but actually aimed at de-escalating tensions and getting the conflict toward a ceasefire and resolution. A course has been taken to push through the so-called Zelensky plan at any cost, which has a pronounced form of an ultimatum. We are ready for negotiations, but given the sad experience of conversations and consultations with the West and Ukrainians, when it comes to an agreement that I hope will be reached at some stage of European security, and in this context the Ukraine crisis will be resolved, then we will of course look very carefully at the wording and will put safeguards in this document against repeated unscrupulous, non-negotiable interpretations. In his remarks, he reflected on U.S. efforts to crush the economy of China and tell China what products they can produce. Uh, in addition to that, uh, he talked about how the use of sanctions by the United States is starting to backfire with new channels of global trade emerging, countries trading with each other without the United States or the Western banking system functioning as the middleman, and how all of this in the long term is not really going to benefit the United States and its people. Uh, the world seems to be shifting. Now, he specifically addressed the rise of India on the global stage and U.S. efforts to stop India from asserting itself as a regional and global power, this hugely populated country with a very big economy. Zelensky. Zelensky, or someone from his team, took offense to Narendra Modi's visit to Russia, calling it a stab in the back to all peacekeeping efforts. The Indian Ministry of External Affairs invited the Ukrainian ambassador and explained to him how to behave. I think India is very dignified. But the fact that the West makes claims even to such powers as China and India means, firstly, shows a lack of culture, an inability to engage in diplomacy at all, and secondly, it is a failure of political analysts. He went into detail, uh, describing the humanitarian catastrophe and also talking about how the United Nations seems to be talking out of both sides of its mouth, condemning uh, the bombing of hospitals and Israeli atrocities, but not really holding Israel accountable for crimes against the Palestinian people. Now, he emphasized that Russia would like to see a ceasefire in Gaza, a ceasefire that can pave the way to negotiations, the returning of the hostages, etc., and that all Ultimately, Russia would like to see the military operation being carried out by Israel brought to a close. And from there, they could then resume negotiations toward the establishment and international full recognition of a Palestinian state. Uh, and that is what Russia would like. But at the same time that Russia and the overwhelming majority of the international community more or less wants this, there are very clearly forces that are trying to escalate the conflict in Gaza to a whole nother level that involves the entire region. Here are some very insightful comments he gave about the situation in the Middle East and the efforts to expand it beyond the Gaza Strip. It feels like there's a will to provoke Hezbollah, as experts believe, in order to ensure the U.S. enters the conflict directly. I hope the West will do everything to make sure these thoughts, if Israel ever has them, will remain no more than thoughts, or better yet, will be forgotten. We're doing everything to soothe the situation. Some politicians clearly want to utilize regional factors to kindle a bigger war here. This is a short-sighted and blind alley policy. We actively stand against it with our allies like Arab countries and the Islamic world. It must not be allowed to happen. 
In all of his remarks, he em emphasized the fact that Russia seeks peace and international development and does not seek to inflame tensions in any region. He emphasized multipolarity, the new world that's rising, the new economy that is taking place and, and emerging in the developing world, uh, with Russia and China at the center of it, and why Western leaders should give up this superiority complex they seem to have, this notion that they will always sit at the center of the global economy and always have the right to dictate to countries around the world how they should conduct themselves, how their governments should function, and who they should trade with, and how their economies should be set up. If we can just get those intermediate range nuclear missiles out of there, uh, pull back some of those F-35s, uh, or, you know, th that's another thing that should have happened, okay? I wanted to explain this to you. We should have had a batch of F-35 planes that could be verified. Remember, verify 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 and i uh, that can't be loaded with nuclear missiles that way if we station them over in europe for uh, conventional uh security all right or any place close to russia finland sweden now they're, they're part of nato you know the russians wouldn't feel so threatened uh, you know and when i say f-35 i hate that damn plane you know the the reason our air force sucks right now is we had a Remember back, you know, when we had the F-16, the A-10 Warthog, uh, you know, of course the F-22, which turned out to be not that great, but certainly better than an F-35. You know, and what we needed, the way that you do an Air Force is the way the Russians do it. You have, and when I say cheap, you know, I'm talking about, you know, planes for a specific mission, all right? Because when you're designing a plane for a specific mission, okay, you can put a lot of capabilities in there. So if you've got, for example, the Russians just came out with a new fighter. And Alexander said it was the Su-31. I think it's the Su-35. All right. That's an air-to-air -air combat a plane. It's specifically for air-to-air -air combat. Okay. I mean, what the hell? So the Fu, Fu I mean, the F-35, okay, it's supposed to be a ground attack plane. It's supposed to be a nuclear-capable plane. It's supposed to be air-to-air uh, -air plane. You know, it's supposed to be an everything plane. That's freaking stupid. You can't design a plane to be an everything plane. I think some of them even take off vertically. No, you need to build this. And that's where the A-10 Warthog came in. It's the A-10 Warthog, let me explain just a couple more things about air technology. All right. The A-10 Warthog, the, the engines are mounted up on top of the wings. All right, That makes it capable of flying or taking off from airstrips that, uh, that could have some fight on them. That's a foreign object, all right? You know, a couple rocks or whatever, they won't get sucked up into the engines. Whereas the F-16, which is an air-to-air -air combat uh, plane, more or less, you know, when it takes off, the engine's on the bottom because they want it to go a lot faster. You know, A-10 Warthog's just a lumbering old uh, big gun with 33 500-pound bombs mounted under it, you know? It's just a huge uh, ground support plane. Which you couldn't, you can put, couldn't put an A-10 in with a good ground defense. It's not good unless you've taken out the uh, the, the air defenses, which is what the Russians did to the uh, Ukrainians. But anyway, um, so I'm just saying that you know, and so the F-16, it's a giant vacuum cleaner, man. If you've ever been in any sort of air force, we had to go out almost every damn day, and we it's called a fod walk, and we walk along. If you see a a little pebble on the runway, you gotta pick it up. Because that F-16 could suck that little pebble right in there and damage the engines. Well, if the Russians hit the airstrips where the F-16s take off from, they're not gonna be able to take off because you're gonna have FOD all over the runways. And, and you know, so that's why putting them in Ukraine doesn't even make sense. Now, I heard a plan that they may put them out on the highways, and I guess the Russians they can't damage the highways, but I mean, it's pretty damn hard to hide a plane on a highway. <laughs> so, so all the Russians do, we've got to do is, is hit those highways with a couple of bombs and then there's fight everywhere and the F-16 can't take off. Anyway, that's, uh, that's just me being me. All right, so the next one was Vivek Ramaswamy. I told you that, well, Trump, you know, you got to remember, he was a Democrat before he became a Republican. He's never been huge on the, you know, the pro-life side of, uh, of abortion. In fact, he's, he's kind of like me, you know. Now that we've kicked it back to the states, if you live in a Republican state, do you want to elect a state legislature and a state governor? 
and, and the top priority for you is abortion, well, by all means, do so. If you live in a Democrat state and you want to chop the head off of your baby or have the mom strangle it when it comes out the womb, you can vote for people like that and get that in your state. So, and then, of course, we've got the, the abortion pill that I've told you about that is available in all 50 states. So abortion, even though the Democrats are going to say that Trump wants a, a federal ban on abortion, that's not the truth. And the Republicans need to get that message out to the independents. Hell, maybe even some liberal Democrats might just say, wow, they've moderated their position in the Republican Party on abortion. Because it's a non-issue. Every woman in the United States can get the abortion pill and abort her baby anytime she wants. Now, it might be illegal in some Republican states where they say you're not allowed to, but I doubt these women would ever get prosecuted if they went past the first trimester to abort their baby. So they, these are the things that I want to try to help the Trump campaign out with. You got to get the message out on this issue. I mean, Vivek is doing the right thing. He's telling people, look, we don't consider abortion an issue in the new MAGA Republican Party. Now, that's going to piss off a bunch of Christians. I'm going to tell you that right now, the pro-lifers. All right, but who cares? One person was pointing out on the radio, they said, you know what, they go to church, and, you know, Trump wanted to put ballot boxes in, in the churches, because, uh, you know, the Democrats have them uh, everywhere, you know, on the streets, in strip clubs. I mean, you name it, man, the Democrats put a ballot box there. And so, the, but the churches said, well, we're a non-political organization. We can't allow ballot boxes in our church. Well, then what the hell? Why are the Republicans even, you know, coveting the, the evangelical uh, vote. They can't even uh, they can't even talk about Trump at church. They can't even talk about the election at church. Probably they can't talk about. I mean, I told you, people at my VFW, I wanted to talk about that Afghan pullout. To me, that was a military disaster. And if you saw the Republican convention, it was brilliant. They brought up the uh, the 13 families of the soldiers that died during that fiasco under that traitor General Milley, and of course the treacherous uh, Austin is still there. But anyway, so, uh, so yeah, and those families, I mean, I tell you, I, I cried, man. I, I, I'm going to lie. I ain't going to lie. I mean, I, when I say I cried, I mean, I wasn't bobbing, but a tear came out of my eye for sure when I was listening to the, their stories and thinking of their kids that had been lost because of the incompetent uh, leadership that we have at the Pentagon and, of course, the, at the Democrats. But uh, so anyway, I, you know, so you can't talk about that. You know, and so I, I just, I finally quit just going to the VFW. I bet right now, if I went to the VFW, at least like here in Florida, all right, that I wouldn't even be able to talk about my theory of two shooters in this Trump assassination. I bet you're not, that's considered political. Everything, everything to these flipping people is considered political. If you can't ever talk about the issues, the issues that are important to you, me, the country, uh, hell, to, to everybody at that VFW, how are you ever going to solve anything? It's kind of like uh, censorship. If you can't, I mean, thank God for Elon Musk, right? If you can't have a healthy debate on anything that, you know, that the, the uh, Ministry of Truth that the Democrats wanted says, you know, that you can't talk about. Like, remember when we couldn't talk about the jam? And uh, maybe there might be some bad things associated with that. Oh, no, they shut all that down. They censored everything. Hell, I got a strike on uh, YouTube just for even mentioning the fact that masks, that I was questioning masks, which, by the way, did you notice Joe Biden? <laughs> he was at that Mexican restaurant, and I don't think he knew he had COVID then, but, you know, now he's got it. He ain't got no damn mask on. That tells you what they really thought about masks. You know, I'm not saying if you believe in the mask, wear the wear. Put a diaper over your head. Help put on a freaking body bag. I don't care, man. But I mean, but to say that that was going to prevent the spread, well, I mean, maybe it did to a certain degree, but still breathing in all that bacteria is probably not good for you. All right, that's all I got to say about that. But I, Republicans, man, get out that you, abortion, take the abortion issue away from the Democrats. They got nothing to run on. You know, you're, I think that that issue, because like I said, who cares about the Christians? Who cares about the evangelicals? They, you can't even put a ballot box in a church. They're not, they're not going to come out in huge droves to vote for Republicans. But if we can pull off some of those independent voters, and maybe even a liberal Democrat or two, taking the abortion issue away from the Democrats, that is much more important. 
All right, three more topics to talk about. I don't think I got when I was talking about the uh, jab and how Biden mandated everything, and it was a personal experience for me. Well, I was that was right after I broke my neck, and I was in the hospital up in Charlottesville, Virginia, woke Charlottesville, Virginia, and they had Im imposed vaccine mandates on all the hospitals in Charlottesville, Virginia. And so a lot of the older nurses, the good nurses, the smart nurses, you know, they had, uh, they all, they didn't want to get the jab. And so they quit because they had, well, it was either quit or get the jab. And so they, or, you know, or just wait till you're fired because they were going to be fired. I imagine some of them did just wait till to be fired. So, so the women taking care of me or the nurses taking care of me were all college students. They didn't know shit, man. I'm going to tell you, they tortured me. I got tortured when I was in the hospital because all of the experienced nurses had been fired by these woke leftist Democrat lunatics. So when I say I take that uh, COVID mandate uh, very seriously, I'm a firsthand victim of that. Okay, so that's where I was coming from on that. Next topic I wanted to get into was Alejandro Mayorkas. And we're going to hit up. Now, the thing that really blows my mind about the world in general is you got Fauci. Fauci is responsible for over 10 million people dying around the world. He was the, the man in charge that got the, uh, that financed the gain of function research that allowed that virus to be created in the first place. And that wasn't the only virus he was uh, researching gain of function. The new bird flu virus, uh, I have a feeling that we're going to find out the NIH is responsible for that also because they were doing gain of function research there. So why isn't Fauci in jail? In fact, he's out making money. He goes on probably MSDNC or uh, CNN or CBS or ABC and they probably pay him money just to get on there and talk. Killed 10 million people, man. It's kind of like Stalin said. You kill a million people, this is statistic. You kill one person and you go to jail. So Alejandro Mayorkas, he is an evil genius. If you want, remember the um, Austin Powers movies, you know, and uh, they, they, I can't remember, what was the name of the evil genius on there, <laughs> the ball, when he did the Baldy guy. Anyway, that's who Alejandro Mayorkas, that's exactly who he is. And he wants to kill his, he wants to destroy the United States. In fact, did you know he was born in Cuba? Hmm? Did you know that he was traveling down to Panama? And they actually told him, I think here recently, they don't want him in the Panama no more. But he was down there organizing the buses to ship the illegal aliens to the United States. Hmm. Alejandro Mayorkas works with the drug cartels to bring in the fentanyl that kills the hundreds of thousands of uh, United States uh, citizens, uh, kids. He's an evil son of a gun, and he's done all this. And then what's, what's really even, even more infuriating to me, but, you know, we got the Uniparty in charge. They'll sit there and make, you know, they pretend, huh, we're going to, we're going to tell Alejandro Mayorkas that he has to come before Congress or he's going to face contempt. Did he even appear? Alejandro said, oh, screw you guys. I ain't worried about the U.S. Congress. I got all the power in the world. I've got the entire defense, uh, you know, all the, the military behind me, you know. So you just barking dogs, Congress. You just barking dogs. He can do whatever the hell he wants and he, what he's doing. And it, like so I said, I mean, I can't believe how fast he was able to move to completely destroy the United States. But I'll try to get into a few more things that he's accomplished since he's, I mean, because you got to admire it. You know, when you can kill a couple hundred thousand Americans a year and you can bring in 30 million, that's another thing we got to worry about. And I keep pointing this out to people. There are 30 million illegal immigrants or more now that are going to be voting for Democrats in the next election. And Greg Abbott's the worst, man. Greg Abbott's the worst. We got about one point, I'm gonna say 1.6 million at least to 2 million illegal immigrants that are gonna vote Democrat because Greg Abbott is giving them the ballots and probably got people in there with the uh, illegal aliens showing them how to mark up the ballots to vote Democrat. He's a Democrat, man, I keep telling you. That's gonna be hard to overcome. If Texas goes blue, we're done. And Abbott's engineering 2 million votes to vote Democrat, man. Just saying. Getting back to the assassination attempt, I just wanted to tell you, that was planned, man. 
All these cries for, uh, we ain't gonna get an investigation. You ain't gonna get no damn investigation. The Secret Service was in on the, the hit. So was uh, the FBI. Mayorkas, I told you, I was just telling you about that evil son of a gun, Mayorkas. Mayorkas probably planned the whole damn thing. I'm telling you, he's the most evil dude that has ever been in charge of the DHS. Anyway, I just uh, wanted to get that off my chest because I keep hearing on the radio, well, when we get the investigate, you ain't going to get no damn investigation, people. The people that committed this, the Secret Service and the FBI. Now, I got a little more advice for Trump. Trump, man, you're going to have to go back to medieval days. You need a taster. You need someone at your table that's going to be tasting your food. Make sure it ain't poisoned. You know, maybe take a sip off that drink and have them do it a good hour beforehand just to make sure that everything's good and then have somebody that you trust watching that plate of food before you go in there and munch down. You know, I'm sure you can find somebody to be that taster. That and uh, I, do, I do watch Alex Jones and he pointed out the next attack is probably going to be a truck bomb if they want to go kinetic. And that truck bomb, that's going to be hard to defend against. So you better be putting up some dragon's teeth to keep these vehicles from, from getting to the events of wherever you're speaking. Because if somebody can, I mean, you think about a tractor trailer loaded with explosives, barrels through the fences, you know, gets up close to the stands and detonates. Ain't not, and not only would they take out Trump, they'd take out all the MAGA people there too. That'd be, I'm sure my Arcus would plan something like that. I told you, he's an evil son of a gun. I wouldn't put that past him, not at all. You know, and I still got the theory that 9-11 was an uh, engineered government plot, but who, who knows, there was too many people that said they were hearing loud bangs and that looked like a controlled demolition to me. The uh, Oklahoma truck bomb. A lot of people said that those explosives were planted inside the building because there was no way that there were enough explosives on that truck. You know, understand how explosives work. If, you, uh, if you're gonna have an explosive, you got a stick of TNT, and you just tie it to the outside of a tree, boom, tree's still going to be there, because all of the explosive energy went out from the, uh, from, from the TNT. Now, if you want to take down the tree, you're going to drill a hole in the tree, and you're going to stick that TNT in the tree, and then that, that's a tamped explosion, and then when it explodes, it's going to blow the hell out of that tree. Well, same with the Oklahoma City bombing. Okay, when that bomb went off, I mean, I'm sure, you know, it, it would do some damage to the front of the building, but most of that explosive energy would go away from the building because the building's a structure. And so the damage that we saw to that building, was it really a truck bomb that did that? I'm just saying, so you can't put anything past my orcas. I'm sure he's got truck bombs loaded right now. I wouldn't doubt it one bit. Couldn't tell I'm dying. It's hotter than hell. I think the heat index is about 107. But uh, here in Florida, I just want to give you a little bit of advice before I get into the Mayorkas again. You got to get out in the heat. And uh, I've been trapped in the house for about four days because it's rained every doggone day. It's even supposed to rain later this afternoon, so I had to come out in the midday heat to try to get a hike in. So, uh, and you say, well, yeah, if I could go to the gym. Well, the gym's closed in my community. But So getting back to Mayorkas, I want to tell you how evil this guy is. You know that 80,000 kids have gone missing, that have, well, it's probably more than that, it's probably 100,000 now, have gone missing. And he's using the drug cartels, because he, he works hand in hand with them, and they've all been sold to pedophiles. Many of those kids are dead now. You can only rape a kid so many times before they, they die. So, and the same with a lot of the women that have come across the border, because he works hand in hand, like I said, with the drug cartels, not only to poison Americans, but to uh, corrupt, you know, the, the Americans that will go in these brothels and rape these women because it's rape. They're not there by choice. I mean, if you're a prostitute and you're doing it by choice, I think that's a noble profession. But if you're being forced into the, uh, sex trafficking, like my Orcus is doing, that's, uh, that's evil, man. The guy is pure evil, I'm telling you. So how many of those women are dead now? And you know that the drug cartels, what they do to make them more malleable is they hook them on drugs so that uh, they can just keep them in the brothels and those drugs eventually kill them. You can only take heroin so long before your liver gives, gives out. And they probably not even giving them that. They might even be giving them low doses of fentanyl, which is even worse. I'm just saying, of course, this is what Democrats are all about. 
they vote for these people and they know these evils take place and they turn a blind eye. That's what infuriates me about a Democrat. Getting back on my orcas, I just wanted to tell you that, uh, oh, we got, hello. Anyway, uh, the uh, poor communities in the cities, I hope you know what he's done. They teamed up, those Venezuelan gangs, a lot of the, uh, the more evil people that have crossed the border, they're sticking them in, in the black communities, or the Hispanic communities, in the inner cities, because they're racist. Most Democrats, you don't understand, are racist. My Orcas is probably one of the biggest racists that ever existed. So is Joe Biden. So I, won't, I hope the blacks and the Hispanics are paying attention, because their communities are about to go up in flames. Because a lot of these illegal immigrants have been stuck there on purpose, and these are the worst of the worst. These are the, these are the people that would just as soon kill you as look at you. I wanted to finish the video with three things that make me smile. I don't know if you got the, there's a radio show, they always have a segment, things that make me smile, and people call in. So the first thing that makes me smile is the second shooter. Now, he missed. I don't believe the kid made that shot. The kid was just a patsy to be killed. But the second shooter was meant, not meant to get killed. And whoever hired him, I guarantee you there's a big contract out because they're pissed off that the second shooter missed. The next one that makes me smile is I think about Fachi and Mayorkas and Biden. There's a special place in hell for them. I don't know if you've ever watched those movies where they show uh, Hitler down in hell and he's being tortured. <laughs> I think it was a comedy. I don't remember. I wish I could remember the movie. But that's what I picture is going to be happening to Mayorkas, Biden, and Fauci when God cuts them down. You can run on for a long time. Run on for a long time. Run on for a long time. Sooner or later, God's going to cut you down. Sooner or later, God's going to cut you down. Go tell that globalist liar, that Democrat idiot writer, that rhino rambler, that nuclear war gambler, that backbiting U.S. politician. Sooner or later, God's going to cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down.